Looking for magic cards or magic carps? On the new CFB Marketplace you can buy directly from local game stores. Support the channel by using the referral code LVD at checkout and be entered into the month-long giveaways, culminating into a Black Lotus and First Edition Charizard. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a red-white hammer combo deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon. And the deck features a couple new cards from Adventures in the Forgotten Realms, so it's certainly worth revisiting. Now the key card in the deck is still Colossus Hammer. The 1 mana equipment costs 8 mana to equip, but gives the equipped creature plus 10 plus 10 and it loses flying. Now we've got a few ways to cheat on the equip cost, so we don't actually have to pay the 8 mana. And one of those is a Resolute Strike, a 1 mana instant, saying a target creature gets plus 2 plus 2 until end of turn. And if that creature is a warrior, we may attach an equipment we control to it. Every single creature in our deck is a warrior, and we even have a few 1 mana warriors. So the curve of turn 1 play a creature, turn 2 play Colossus Hammer plus Resolute Strike to equip it, allows us to attack with an equipped Colossus Hammer on turn 2, which can set up for some very explosive starts. Now the second way we have of equipping Colossus Hammer for free is with Bruinor Battle Hammer from Forgotten Realms. The 4 mana 5-3 Legendary Dwarf Warrior says each creature we control gets plus 2 plus 0 for each equipment attached to it, and we may pay 0 mana rather than pay the equip cost of the first equip ability we activate each turn. So that allows us to equip one Colossus Hammer for free every turn. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, another new addition from Forgotten Realms is Fighter Class, which adds a lot of consistency to our deck, as the 2-mana class enchantment on level 1 when it enters a battlefield allows us to search our library for an equipment card, reveal it and put it into our hand, so we can find a Colossus Hammer if we don't have one already, and then there's a few additional equipment we can search up. There's Boots of Speed, which is 1-mana to play, 1 to equip, giving plus 1 plus so and haste, so potentially allows us to attack with a hasty Bruinor on turn 4, which will attack for 8 damage total. Then we've got Bone Splitter as another cheap equipment, one to play, one to equip, giving two additional power, so it pairs nicely with some of our cheaper warriors, which also get rewarded for being equipped. Then we've got our four copies of Colossus Hammer, and then our evasive equipment of choice is Shadow Spear, giving plus one plus one, Trample and Lifelink, can also help in racing situations, and cost two mana to equip. Could also be playing Maul of the Skyclaves, even though Colossus Hammer says our creature loses flying, as long as we give it flying after equipping Colossus Hammer, we can still fly over to deal evasive damage, so the sequencing with Colossus Hammer is important if you decide to include Maul of the Skyclaves. And then we also have four copies of Kazul's Fury in the non-creature spell department as a 3 mana instant, as an additional cost to cast it. We have to sacrifice a creature, and then Kazul's Fury deals damage equal to the sacrificed creature's power to any target. So this can go directly upstairs to finish out the game, maybe if the opponent can keep chum blocking the creature that's equipped with Colossus Hammer, even though some of them have Trample. And then we can also play Kazul's Fury as a tap land, if we maybe need to get up to 4 mana to play Bruinor instead. And Kazul's Fury is a great combo with our next creature, which is Fireblade Charger, a 1 mana 1-1 one, one Goblin Warrior, has haste as long as it's equipped, so if we have the turn 2 combo with Colossus Hammer and Resolute Strike, we don't even have to expose a Charger to removal on turn 1, as we can play the Hammer first instead. And then when the Charger dies, it deals damage equal to its power to any target. So if we have a Charger equipped with our Colossus Hammer, it's going to have 11 power. So then we can potentially deal 22 damage by sacrificing it with a Kazul's Fury. Then the next creature is Goblin Cavalier, which is a 1-1 with Trample, gets plus 2 plus 0 for each equipment attached to it. So getting a Colossus Hammer onto the Cavalier will turn it into a 13 power creature with Trample. So that's very important to get past any Chum Blockers. And then at 2 mana we've got more Trample with Champion of the Flame, a 1-1 one, one warrior that gets plus 2 plus 2 for each aura and equipment attached to it, so similar to the Gavalier. And then Core Blade Master is another great way to increase our damage output as a 1-1 one, one warrior with double strike, saying equipped warriors we control have double strike as well, so that can potentially double our damage. And then of course the full playset of Bruinor, the mana base, besides our four copies of Kazul's Fury, includes all 12 red-white dual lands that come into play untapped early on, with Sacred Foundry, the red-white pathway, and Inspiring Vantage, and then four of each basic land as well to round out the mana base. I didn't really go over the level 2 and level 3 of Fighter class since we don't activate those very often, but the level 2 can potentially reduce our equip costs, and level 3 forces the opponent to block with target creature when we attack. 
Other cards I've considered in the deck include Board the Weatherlight as a way to find historic cards, which include all our equipment, as well as our Saga Fighter class and our Bruinor, which is a legendary creature. So we've got about an 85% hit rate with our Board the Weatherlight, which is an acceptable number. I would prefer to get closer to 90%, because missing with it feels very bad. Could maybe include an artifact land like Treasure Vault, although it doesn't make any colored mana, which is also problematic, but definitely a card that I had on my watch list. And you could also play Gigantha the Wellspring as your companion, but I don't like having the green mana symbol on my deck box, so I ended up cutting it, and it's not like you're gonna use it very often. So for now, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, and we've got a fine hand. If we draw either Bruinor or Resolute Strike, we can combo off with Colossus Hammer, and in the meantime we've got Gavalier, which we can equip with Maybe a double striking bone splitter, which still gets in quite a bit of damage, facing a Lurus deck. So we'll see what kind of variety of Lurus deck it is. A black one could be bad for us, since that means more removal. Thoughtseize can take away maybe the bone splitter here. Goes for the Blade Master. Ooh, Brunor is a great draw. So Bone Splitter equip, and then as soon as we find land 4, I can equip Colossus Hammer right away. Gavalier applying a nice bit of pressure. Soul Guide Lantern's fine. Another backup Gavalier is nice to have. So yeah, just waiting for land number 4, and then the opponent could just be dead. Opponent doesn't know about Bruinor yet. It's gonna be a looting. Maybe looking for a removal spell. Discards Arcanist and Croxa. I'm glad we didn't have to face it. Turn to Arcanist. Stitcher Supplier, we can just trample over. So, land 4 has to be untapped. So, no Kazul's Fury. There we go. There's Bruinor. And doesn't matter which one of the Gavaliers we equip here. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and our hand doesn't have Colossus Hammer yet, but we do have everything else we need with our Resolute Strike, a couple creatures, and in the meantime, Boots of Speed on the Gavalier and Champion can do some damage. So with the fact that we can draw both our class enchantments and Hammer, I think uh, this means I'm gonna keep. So these kind of fair draws where we don't have Hammer are usually not enough to beat some of the faster decks in Historic, but uh, sometimes having a functional hand is still better than uh, not doing anything, so... For a combo deck, it's nice to have sort of a backup plan. As we're facing Glasspool Mimic, so it could be the Neoform combo deck. Trying to combo off with Seagate Stormcaller. Yeah, Shimmer of Possibility definitely points in that direction. So this is a combo versus combo matchup which means we're probably going to lose if we try to get there with kind of the fair equipment plan. So hoping to draw our hammer as soon as possible, basically. All right, turn two. Could play champion or I could go boots equip. Feels a little bit better. And then next turn I can maybe equip the champion with the boots. can also try to use Kazul's Fury the same turn we use Resolute Strike to maybe get a little bit of extra damage in. So next turn if I go for Strike, I could get in 6. So we're not too far off killing the opponents with regular damage, but still prefer to draw Hammer. 
as we see Gilded Goose from our opponents, so... I guess there's no real advantage to playing Champion Equipping, because they can just block one of my one-powered creatures with a Goose. So I'll just sit for four. And then play out some creatures, don't expect any sweepers from them. Alright, so next turn, let's say I do go for Resolute Strike plus Kazul's Fury. I'm close to lethal. But can my opponent combo off this turn? I guess I also had the option of just using Kazul's Fury as removal. Although, I'm not sure if that was worth it. Another Resolute Strike? Alright. Well, I guess we attack with the team, and then we'll have to do some math. Opponent's blocks champion. So I could just Resolute Strike, let's say, the Gavalier here. And then I do want to put the equipment on it so that I have more power total. So let's try this. And then move the boots, let damage happen. And opponent's got a bounce spell, although they did have to kick the Into the Royal at least. So I could Kazul's Fury for 6 damage or I could Resolute Strike again to get a little bit more damage in with the other Gavalier. Although then if I draw Hammer, I can no longer equip it for free. So I think going for Kazul's Fury is reasonable. Also means the opponent doesn't get to draw a card from the kicked Royal. And then I still have Resolute Strike in case I draw Hammer or Fighter Class. Alright, time to equip the boots. Opponent can make a food and sacrifice it, so they're not necessarily dead here. It's gonna be an explosion for one, so we can save the Gavalier with Resolute Strike. And then I think we have five damage to trample over the goose, so yeah, the goose is cooked. There we go, sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. And our hand has all the pieces to combo off with Hammer on turn 4. So it's a little bit on the slow side, especially on the draw, but still gotta keep. And then in the meantime, we can maybe do some damage with the Bone Splitter. Soul Scar Mage, so. A burn-heavy deck is bad news, because they can just kill the few creatures we have. Do have Shadow Spear to also potentially search up if we need to gain life. Turn to Pyromancer. So the Blade Master is gonna get killed. I could play Charger and equip it. Although the Soul Scar Mage deals damage in the form of minus one counters, so that means the Charger would die and not deal damage equal to its power. So, that's an interesting twist. So I think that means I don't want to play the Charger and instead either Fighter Class for the Hammer or play Blade Master, which is probably going to get killed, but so be it. So, if I go Fighter Class, I can get Hammer. Next turn, I want to get the Hammer in play. So I can equip it the turn I play Brunor. And then it would be nice to have multiple creatures in play, but that's just not going to happen. Yeah, I think I just go for Blade Master over Fighter Class. 
that way the opponent doesn't necessarily know what I'm up to. And if they use removal on the Blade Master, they might not have it for my future creature. And if they don't kill Blade Master, I can block Pyromancer, so we'll see. A Goblin Chain Whirler, I guess, would be painful and would have been a reason to play Fighter Class instead. Also want to try to play Sacred Foundry tapped, but next turn the plan is probably just Fighter Class, play Hammer, and then I'll have to shock myself to play Brunor and equip. So having the opponent tapped out, the turn we play Brunor and equip is also going to be important, otherwise they can just kill the creature before it gets plus 10 plus 10. Alright, looks like Blade Master is holding off Pyromancer, so that's good. Potentially means they don't have any burn spells. It's gonna be a light up the stage finding Wizard's Lightning, that's unfortunate. But maybe they don't have a third land, and yeah. There we go. Cavalier, potentially a nice one too. So my opponent was reluctant to kill Blade Master before attacking. They don't seem to have a third land. And next turn they might want to play Pyromancer to use up their Exiled card while they can. So where does it leave me? I guess I'll still go Fighter Class, play Hammer, and then next turn I can equip Brunor himself. Which will save it for most removal spells. And if the opponent stepped out after playing Pyromancer, they wouldn't be able to kill Brunor at instant speed. At least that's the hope. Now I will be taking quite a bit of damage here, at least 5 down to 11. And they drew the land, so that complicates matters, as they could potentially have another Wizard's Lightning in response. They could also fire off a Burn Spell now to get the Prowess Trigger on Soulscar Mage. If it's a 2 damage Burn Spell, Brunor is still fine, but if it's exactly Wizard's Lightning, we're gonna get destroyed. So take three, and our opponent passes. Planes means I don't have to shock myself at least, and yeah, I mean I've got a couple options. Could also go with play some creatures, equip Bone Splitter, but uh, I think I gotta go with uh, the big Brunor play, and uh, that way I'll have a large creature able to block all the opponent's stuff as well. But they definitely have an instance. Just gotta hope it's play with fire or a shock instead of a wizard's lightning. Alright, that worked, so they wouldn't be able to kill Brunor all that easily now. Play with fire going face. They can easily burn us out from here, so it's kind of my job to figure out a way to actually win. A trampling gavalier could do it, although it doesn't have haste. Charger does have haste, but doesn't trample. So this is where Kazul's Fury would come in handy. Just equip Bone Splitter and then sacrifice Brunor, which would be game. A Lava Runner. Alright, that means we're just dead to an all-out attack. So yeah, just a little bit too slow for this matchup. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, and we've got a nice hand. Looking at potentially turn 3 kill if all goes according to plan. Hopefully no spell peers here. Oh wow, that's unfortunate. There goes our plan. So, not sure what we're up against. Maybe a blue-green flash deck. Doesn't look like merfolk. So now we're lacking equipment, which is not where we want to be. Yeah, this highlights the difference between being on the play and on the draw. Cutthroat, so blue-green flash. Expecting to face lots of counter spells and nightback ambushers. Not really an experience I've uh, missed since rotation. Blame Master can attack. Probably play another one. Okay. 
Get to one extra mana to pay for soft counters like sensor. Quench will still work. So chances of Brunor resolving are pretty low, although I don't have any equipment to go with it anyway. So, guess I'll attack. Dissipates, sure. So if I double Resolute Strike, I can potentially deal 10 damage with Blade Master. Although any bounce spell is going to be quite punishing. At least it allows me to attack into 4 mana and a potential Ambusher. Bone Splitter is not bad. Play Equip, still have Resolute Strike. Although I would be dead to uh, a Night Pack Ambusher here because it would have been able to attack back for 9. But sitting back is not winning me the game either. Yeah, Brazen Borrower bouncing Blade Masters set back. Could have also tried to attack with Blade Master and see if they have any bounce spells. If they don't, go for Resolute Strike to equip. And if they do, I would have at least been able to replay Blade Master. But uh, the Brazen Borrower can just fly over and kill us now. So yeah, this one just didn't go to plan. The Spell Pierce kind of ruined our entire plan from the start. Another Brazen Borrower. Alright, GG's. Also just effective against our hammer plan in general, so if it weren't for spell pierce, they might have been able to bounce my creature anyway. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. Pretty straightforward turn two combo, and since I have charger. I'll go with turn one hammer to play around removal. Charger into Resolute Strike, and there's not much my opponent can do about it for a single green. So our opponent's in the Abyss. On turn two, they'll have to lose a creature every turn, or find a very specific answer here, maybe a way to destroy artifacts, because if they kill Charger, they're still taking 11. Red-green not known for having bounce spells, and our opponent explodes, so that was a fast one. Alright, we're on the play, and what do we think of this hand? No hammer or way to find it. Charger plus a couple cheap equipment and a Kazul's Fury. Don't love it, but we are on the play, so a fair hand on the play with these equipments might still be good enough. Yeah, I guess having two equipment to go with Bruinor plus a boots to give it haste is kind of nice. I'll try it. And then... I'm not sure yet if I'm playing Kazul's Fury as a land or not. Let's just play Charger and see what happens. Because Fury plus Charger would be a nice combo as well. Opponent on a Bant deck. Some sort of lands based Reclaimer deck. Okay, so I can play Boots and Shadow Spear, or I can just equip the Boots and then next turn equip Shadow Spear. Although then I'm not guaranteed to play Brunor on Curve, which is probably the most important part. So I think Boots equip Boots is probably fine. And then I'm fine to trade Charger for a Claimer. Hmm. 
next turn might just go Shadow Spear plus play Kazul's Fury tapped. Ooh, I see Strict Proctor. So your opponent's got some combos of their own to prevent ETB effects. Luckily, don't have too many of those to worry about. So, yeah, I'm gonna play Kazul's Fury tapped, play my two one drops. And then I could attack with the Charger just to kill the Proctor, which might be part of some combo on their part. Which I guess is fine. Could also use Kazul's Fury to um, kill the Proctor. That doesn't seem worth it. So yeah, let's just attack with Charger. Another option, I guess, was instead of playing Shadow Spear, equipping Gavalier with the boots to attack for a little bit more damage. And yeah, there we see Lotus Field, the reason to include Strict Proctor and Reclaimer, a deck we featured a while back. Another Kazul's Fury could be a nice addition. So time for Bruinor. And then I can choose which equipment to equip for free. Could put a Shadow Spear on Charger, or I could put Boots on Bruinor, and they wouldn't be able to uh, take him out, so that seems better. And then next turn, Shadow Spear plus Kazul's Fury could be lethal. Opponent's jumping. And they can fetch up another Lotus Field. So my opponent's gonna get to untap with 7 or 8 mana here. But Kazul's Fury means even equipping Fireblade Charger could give me lethal without having to attack. Let's say the opponent ramps out a coma and starts tapping down my creatures. And just another Reclaimer. And they can animate Crawling Barons. Don't recall exactly what instance that deck played. I guess Stifle is one of them. To combo with Lotus Field, so that could potentially counter the Charger trigger. So important to keep in mind. For now I could put Shadow Spear on Bruinor to make it trample. And then... Yeah, I guess Kazul's Fury would still be lethal. They can't counter the damage part of it. It's only the Charger trigger they could counter. So, equip for zero. And attack. Thinking if there's a reason to send the other creatures, probably not. Opponents jump in, so we trample for eight. And then Fury could be lethal at any point, might want to wait for the opponent to tap out a little bit more in case of any shenanigans. That seems reasonably safe. Could also move some equipment to the Charger to sack Charger instead of Brunor, which feels like a less all-in play. But I'm just going to pass with Fury up. Pun didn't do anything end of turn, not even level up Crawling Barons. So it's kind of on them to make a move, and I can win at instant speed, so... Don't really feel pressured into doing anything. And our opponent explodes. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing a Lurus deck. My hand is potentially okay if I can hit a couple more land drops to get up to Bruinor, or if I draw a Resolute Strike. Lurus could also mean hand disruption, so generally want to avoid mulliganing. And then... Gonna be turn 1 Inquisition, so that could take the hammer. If they don't take hammer, I'll definitely play it out turn one. 
where it should be a little safer than in my hand. Opponent takes Blade Master. Yeah, I'll play the hammer. Turn two champion. Can suit it up with a bone splitter on turn three, perhaps. Alright, so this is a Grixis deck. So they could have Kologan's commands to destroy artifacts, which is important to point out. There is a reason not to play champion until it has a little bit more toughness, maybe way to like equip it right away so it can survive a cheap burn spell. So I could just play two more equipment out, although then a discard spell could take away my cheap creature. So, an interesting spot. I guess I can wait a turn on playing champion. Not expose it to removal right away. Which plays into Sprite Dragon getting a counter. Although we will potentially miss out on an attack if they didn't have removal. That's going to be iteration. Alright, so hopefully they're tapped out. I get to equip my champion so it at least doesn't die to a 2 damage burn spell. But our opponent shocking themselves with Blood Crypt is not a great sign. Charger, I guess, on the other hand, is a decent draw, because I can potentially suit that up if they kill it. I could kill Spry Dragon, although they can always kill it in response. So if I go Charger, Equip Bone Splitter, they just kill it. I deal one damage, which is not enough for killing the Spry Dragon. But I could play two creatures, that way if I draw land four, I'll have two creatures to potentially equip with Hammer right away. I guess that's a fine plan. So I'm not sure if it's a burn spell or a fatal push here. But they've got something. Alright, fatal push on champion. Another iteration. They might not have a way to stop Brunor from entering the battlefield and uh, equipping Hammer, which puts us in a reasonable spot. Still need land 4, and our opponent knows it. Shadow Spear means we can potentially win a racing situation. So it's gonna be close. Double iteration means they got to look at a lot of cards. So they might have all the answers they need. Opting for Fable Passage over the Spire Bluff. So they needed the extra mana. For a Drown. Alright, I mean, the door is open for Brunor to resolve. Question is, is he gonna survive? Alright, it's gonna be a Charger instead. I'll equip Shadow Spear to start gaining a bit of life. And then now, land four into Brunor. Let's me potentially put hammer on charger and gain a ton of life. Although we're getting to the point where if they kill charger, Brunor is just going to be too slow. And yeah, there's the card I was afraid of, Kologan's command, making me discard. So goodbye Brunor, and charger's dead. And yeah, Fighter Class is not gonna do it here. There are some living weapon equipments you could technically play, so you have a creature to search up if you're out. But those are kind of slow and clunky. Alright, GG's. Opponent has enough interaction here. And that's often gonna be a bad matchup, a deck playing cards like Fatal Push, Colgan's Command. Not what we want to see on the other side of the table. And the Sprite Dragon able to apply enough pressure here to close out the game in time. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a hand that's missing a way to equip for free. We essentially have triple hammer, or fighter class can grab another equipment. I don't think that's gonna cut it. This hand is not great, but it is functional. And then 
I already have Trample built in. The lifelink could still be useful in a racing situation, but I do want to keep two creatures in case of removal, and then definitely keeping Bone Splitter, so the questions between Boots and Shadow Spear. Mana could also be a constraining factor, so I think I'm keeping Boots over Shadow Spear, but it's a close call. The fact that my two creatures already have Trample definitely nudged me in that direction. Ooh, double Sphinx of Foresight revealed, so opponent is some sort of combo deck. Not sure what type of combo deck that needs to find a specific card in their opening hand. Using the scry here. Their opponent blue green with Paradise Druid. So I guess it could just be the Neoform deck after all. And then I want to equip Bone Splitter. One mana left. Probably just uh, play another Bone Splitter, or I could make use of my red mana. Maybe play like a Fireblade Charger. But yeah, we could technically be dead next turn if our opponent has a Neoform combo. They would need Neoform and Seagate Stormcaller. Um, I do want to make use of my red mana. So let's go with Boots of Speed, that way if I draw land I can equip both the second Bone Splitter and the Boots. So, it's going to be an expressive iteration. They didn't want to tap Paradise Druid to make red, so they won't be able to play a land for free here. Finds another Paradise Druid instead. So, unlikely for my opponent to combo off next turn, given that they didn't combo off this turn, but we'll see. For now, I think, uh, continue with the plan. And with the Boots of Speed in play, we can make more hasty threats if needed. So let's see if they can combo here. They might have one of the two pieces in hand, opt now trying to dig for the second. And yeah, if they don't have it, they need pretty specific interaction to survive. Playing the Sphinx is not going to be enough. It's going to be a Neoform plus Dual Caster Mage. Alright, I guess that does it too. So if they combo with Dual Caster Mage instead of Stormcaller, they need an extra mana. But it does add some more redundancy to the deck. So opponent's going to get a whole bunch of Dual Casters and then eventually... Tuck Tuck Rubble Fort for haste. All the dual casters entering the battlefield are clones like Last Bull Mimic. So yeah, just a turn too slow. Didn't have a particularly exciting draw. So there we go. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a nice opening hand. We've got a turn two combo. We'll have to play Gavalier turn one. Hope it doesn't get removed. And then turn two, Hammer plus Strike. Sacred Foundry untapped into Soul Scar Mage. All right. Well, it's going to be too late for them to burn our Gavalier once it's equipped. Going to be a little bit too big for them to handle. Let's see if they want to block with the Soul Scar Mage by any chance. They do. So we get to take that out as well. Blink and you missed it. Ooh, wow, Fateful Absence actually saving them here. A very unusual card to see alongside Soulscar Mage, but yeah, I guess that'll work. So 
Kazul's Fury plus Charger is still a way to potentially win. So I probably want to get cheaper equipment with Fighter class, like a Bone Splitter. And then next turn I can equip a Charger and attack with it. And then uh, Kazul's Fury will be an extra way to close out the game. So do I go for it? Yeah, probably fine. If they kill Charger in response to me equipping, then uh, we'll go on the Bruinor plan instead. Right, there's a shock, that one makes a little bit more sense. And then, do I play Kazul's Fury at this point? I think so. Then next turn I'm guaranteed Brunor Equip Hammer. Puts it out of burn range. Alright, another Charger also does it. Although playing Brunor is more fun, although there's a decent chance it gets killed by like a Lightning Helix. So let's bait out with a Charger first. And then I can also crack the clue, otherwise I could have just leveled up fighter class. So I get to attack. And infuriates as a pump spell on Lumimancer, sure. So I can either deal three to the opponent's face, or I can finish off Lumimancer, which is probably the safest play here. And then I can crack Clue now in case I draw land. Alright, so next turn I can play Brunor. Hopefully there's no instant speed removal. And I can equip a bunch of stuff to it. Alright, there we go. So they need another Fateful Absence, which seems to be absent here. Alright, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw. What do we think of this hand? No way to equip for free, probably Mulligan. Up against an Obosh deck, so probably like a red aggro deck is my guess. Alright, so this hand is missing a hammer or a way to find it, and any equipment in general. What I do like about it is that it has a lot of creatures, which is important against a potential burn deck, as uh, we'll need one of those creatures to survive to eventually equip. And then I can either bottom Bruinor or bottom Resolute Strike, because I think I'm going to need all the other creatures. So Bruinor's kind of expensive, but it's also an extra threat. Resolute Strike could help me combo if I find a hammer soon. So I think it's bottom Brunor, but close call. So we're still potentially able to equip hammer on turn two. And then if our opponent does have a lot of removal, hopefully one of these will stick around. Turn one mountain, not a surprise. And a Dragon Rage Channeler, and there's hammer. All right, so Instead of playing Charger, I'm just going to play Hammer, and if our opponent's tapped out, I can play Hasty Charger, thanks to the ability. Equipped with a Hammer, which dodges most burn spells. If our opponent doesn't tap out, I'm probably just going to play Blade Master. Since I don't want to have my opponent kill my creature in response. And then next turn I also have the option of playing a Blade Master and then keeping up Resolute Strike. If they try and burn it, I can equip Hammer in response. And that should leave us in a pretty good position. Spikefield Hazard exiles, also prevents the Charger's ability from triggering. Cycles Crater, good way to enable Delirium. So they seem like a Delirium-heavy deck. 
which probably means they also have unholy heat, able to deal six damage. Still not enough to kill a creature with a hammer on it, but double unholy heat might be able to. Kazul's Fury, great combo with the Charger. So, opponent still got one mana up, so I don't feel comfortable going Charger Resolute Strike. So instead, probably just play Blade Master and pass. And then if they try and kill it, I can equip Hammer Response. Part of me wants to equip Charger instead, because then I can sacrifice Kazul's Fury. Alright, Spike Field Hazard. Strike and Response. Now they will know about this creature equipped with Hammer, but for a red deck it's still not easy to deal with it. So they're gonna start chumping. And Kazul's Fury also represents 11 damage. And opponent's gonna go digging. They do get to grow the Flame Blade, which has Menace, can potentially deal quite a bit of damage. Probably also an Arc Light Phoenix deck or a Hollow One deck. So they could easily make a lot of chumpers. There's also Blazing Rootwalla, which can be a chump blocker. Fiery Temper going upstairs. So, yeah, my opponent could easily outrace this while they keep chumping the Blade Master over and over. So, might have played out better had I gone for Charger, although they wouldn't have fired off the Burn spell on the Charger. Another Flame Blade, so they can flash back Looting to attack with both Flame Blades. So, I'm kind of surprised they kept one of them back. But, uh,. Yeah, I mean, I gotta start attacking to get in a bit of damage and then play two more creatures out. Seems fine. So, unsurprising block. So, if our opponent flashes back looting, opponent discards two. So, they could hit me for nine. Unlikely for them to have Arclight Phoenix, I guess, when they have a Bosch as companion, so scratch that but they could still have Hollow One. So yeah, I don't think I need to Kazul's Fury any of the opponent's creatures. So let's just play two creatures out. Can also double block one of the Adepts if needed. But I'll hang on to Fury as a spell instead of a land here, I think. Yeah, there's Hollow One discarded, since they weren't able to play it here for one mana. And a Fiery Temper, which they don't have the mana to cast. And another Looting. Alright, so I have to double block Adept, otherwise I'm dead. Another Fiery Temper goes to waste. So very close game in the end. So they don't have lethal if they attack with both Adepts. And then they're dead on the way back. So best they can do is send in one Adept. So if I take it, next turn I can Kazul's Fury Adept, sacking Charger, dealing two damage to it, clearing a path for Blade Master. So I can take eight. All right, there we go. Sweet. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and we have everything we need except for, I guess, a cheap creature to equip. Fighter class finds hammer. We've got resolute strike, and then eventually Bruinor at four. I think I got to keep. We have around uh, 14 creatures that I would be happy to draw here in the first couple turns. The 8 1 drops. We've got Blade Master at 2, as well as a couple champions. So 
So definitely getting Hammer. Against Sacred Foundry, Shadow Spear is also potentially going to be valuable, but when we have Double Bruin or Resolute Strike, gotta get the Hammer. Alright, so Charger means I could technically equip it with Hammer already, although into two open mana that's a little risky, so I'm just going to pass. If they tap out, I might go for it. Otherwise, Bruinor can equip it as well. Alright, hit for 13. So not sure what my opponent's up to here. They haven't done anything yet. And I guess they explode. Alright, I guess I'll take it. So yeah, we got to see our red-white hammer deck in action, capable of some very fast wins. Sometimes if you're facing more interactive decks, you're gonna struggle. So those are the matchups we want to avoid. But for the most part, Historic Best of One is a pretty linear format with a lot of combo decks trying to do their own thing and Hammer can be one of the fastest decks in the format with a good draw. If you've got kind of the fair draw with just some random equipment, then you're not going to be able to compete with the best draws from your opponent, but uh, it's nice to still have that backup plan available in case things don't entirely pan out. So it's also a decent deck for ranking up since games are over pretty quickly and uh, the win rate is definitely above 50%. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.